what's up everybody welcome back to the channel pretty exciting today we're going to start on the t90 transmission teardown on the 59 cj5 i separated the transfer case and the bell housing from this so we got just a bare transmission uh you know i'll go over the removal process when we go to install it because i can't i can't see the camera so hopefully the angle's good but anyway you got your main shaft here that the output gear for the transfer case goes on so before you remove it you got to take that off and the transfer case will pull off and then also if you put the shift tower in gear that'll hold the forks and i'll show you here in a second why because this bearing got stuck and it pulled the whole main shaft out which is no big deal it had to come out anyway so we got a big needle bearing needle bearing mess in here right now but it had to get taken apart anyway so all right let's get this top cover off and you can see the shape it's in as you can see it's not too bad it got a little dirty from the uh pressure washing i pressure washed it yesterday but you can see everything just fell apart because this bearing got stuck which is no big deal. We'll uh, just separate the shift tower for now. We'll get that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and remove the throw out bearing from the front. And then also the retaining cap. There you go. I'm trying to do it to where you can see. So it's going to be three Allen bolts. Yeah, my uh, I haven't I haven't gotten a, a longer tripod yet, so I got this mounted up on my vehicle mount up on the uh, top of this workbench here. So hopefully it comes out okay. And sorry for the extra noise. The neighbors are deciding to run their four wheelers and dirt bikes, so hopefully it doesn't get in the way too much. So here's our retainer, got the old gasket, and here's our front shaft and bearing with the old felt washer, that's no longer holding anything in, you can see it right here, uh, that's not a good sign, the snap ring expanded and came right off the main shaft here which is okay we got a new one anyway all right so to get all the main shaft out and everything hopefully this comes out on the camera but you got your uh pretty much your pin retainer this holds your reverse gear and then also your uh idler gear so we're just going to tap that plate out and that's what's retaining this plate here it's kind of the uh the bearing sits in the output bearing sits in there and it acts as kind of a stop for the gear set you can go ahead and tap that out so here's the plate and now we're just going to take our main shaft and we'll probably just have to use well it's a little persuasion to get the plate off there we go so like i said this bearing was stuck on here so here's our uh second and third gear 
uh, shift uh, your your synchro collar and there we go so this is all going to get breaking down into a sub assembly we're just doing a uh, quick tear down and then there's going to be multiple series in this because I'm going to clean everything up and further explain we're just doing a quick tear down so I can get it cleaned up so all right the next thing we're going to go ahead and remove our uh, input shaft as you can see we got some damage to the synchronizer doll, uh, synchronizer ring here the teeth the teeth are in surprisingly good shape but the uh, actual surface of it is pretty mangled and then your teeth your teeth for your uh, synchro and then your actual input shaft this is a uh, third gear I believe I have to check in the book all right so now that's out we got some thrust washers I need to go where they came from we'll pop out our input shaft bearing this has a snap ring it only goes in one way So next is going to be the main shaft. So this is going to have your your pin, and then there's going to be a lot of needle bearings. I don't exactly know how many. I think it's close to a hundred little needle bearings stacked in there, and the shaft goes through. It's kind of a it's going to be fun to put the new one in. So that shaft, we're going to take a brass drift. Actually, before that, we got to take the uh, the oil slinger off. I don't know. Hopefully, you can see it. Well, that's going to be two two Allen bolts on the front here. Oh yeah, they're going to be pretty tight. Let me get a ratchet. All right, so I broke broke them loose off camera see we had some corrosion build up in here so that flinger is just gonna come up and around all right so now we're gonna get our main gear shaft out All right, so before we can take the main shaft out, we got to take the reverse gear out. You're going to drive the pin for it right here. It's going to be driven out. Here's our pin. And here's our reverse gear. So there's no bearing in this. It's just a brass, brass bushing. And then our shaft should come out. There we go. Or gear, I should say, not shaft. Oops. Don't forget your, uh, got a back thrust washer and then you're gonna have two in the front. We'll go over that more in the reassembly. Here we go. So you can see all those needle bearings down in there. They're currently falling out. So reassembly of this is real and kind of a real pain, you know, just because of these damn needle bearings. But, you know, it gives you a lot, a lot more surface area in that main gear. So right, there you have it. This is, it's that, uh, 
it's that quick to get it down to a bare case so i still got a lot of cleaning left to do on it got a lot of oil sludge in it and then uh, just take the transmission mount off and next time you see this case it'll be brand new looking so we'll, real quick we'll just go over our parts I've been uh, meaning for years to get a uh, pretty much like a transmission teardown table you know like a nice metal workbench with a drain in the middle and I'm on my like fourth transmission on the same area of the workbench along with like my four transfer case so I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon but anyway here this is our main shaft that the bearing the needle bearings rotate on on our main shaft here on our main gear this is also referred to as a cluster gear I don't know why I keep calling it a shaft it's been a long day and here we have our second and third gear synchronizer this is second gear here and this is your first and reverse sliding gear so you're gonna have a straight cut so you pretty much got a straight cut gear there we go like this so this is gonna be on the bottom that right on the top and then your gear your, your first and reverse slide back and forth and then your second slides your second and third ring will slide back for second and then up for third to contact the main shaft here and that's pretty much it so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and try to de degrease these real quick and we'll go ahead and, and fully disassemble it all right hopefully this angle isn't too bad i gotta do all kinds of goofy angles but here we got the uh sliding shaft here and we have some pretty significant damage to the second and third gear synchro so we got a broken spring this, uh, this holds in the, the synchro dogs and then we got a broken synchro dog right here this one's broken and it looks like three pieces one half and then on the edge here and then we also got a thunderstorm rolling in so hopefully hopefully it's not too loud but anyway so to remove this whole sliding gear this whole synchronizer we're just going to remove this big snap ring here make sure you have some heavy duty snap ring pliers because they're a real pain to get off Got a little bit of crud buildup and galling on it. too bad that's right now here's our second gear synchronizer this one's in a lot better shape than the third gear kind of compare them you can see this one's in, in pretty good shape it's squared off still and on this one you can see all the gouging and then all the taper on it so I've never seen a third gear one this wore out before. Normally it's a second gear. So our second gear comes right off. This too just has a brass bushing inside. That's a ream, a ream fit. So we'll inside mic it, make sure it's within spec, which it should be. It's got a pretty low miles on it. And then our first gear it's going to come off on the back side because if I remember right, there's a slight taper to the shaft here. It's 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just knock this bearing off. I'm just giving it light taps. Cause it's just a, a little, it's just a slip fit bearing. It's just got a little bit of corrosion. There's our output bearing. And then your output bearing spacer, that's critical you don't lose this. Our bearing retaining plate and our first slash reverse sliding gear. Now, you wanna inspect this gear because this gear is gonna have a brunt of the force because this is a non-synchronized gear and you're always going in the first or you know going into reverse. So we got some we got a little bit of wear on the teeth on both sides. Um, you know, it doesn't really justify replacing it. I think this is going to be just fine to put back in. Maybe do a little bit of filing to the teeth and it'll be good to go because parts, parts right now, um, I'm having a hard time finding parts, especially gears and stuff. And, uh, Luckily, I peeked into the top cover of this transmission and really didn't see anything, you know, too bad. And then there's nothing to disassemble on the third gear. This is all one piece on your input shaft. And um, so your, your sliding shaft and your main shaft, this taper goes in here and there's gonna be about, I think nine or 10 larger roller bearings that go in there all right so i had a major snafu uh, i was in picture mode not video mode this whole time so i've been talking to a dead camera the whole time and no audience so anyway do a quick recap of the past 15 minutes or so now, try to explain this as best I can. So, there we go. Anyway, nothing's uh, wanting to cooperate today. Anyway, all right. So, to remove your shift forks, so you're just gonna slide them out of the way out of the contact of your shift cane and you're gonna have two nail style roll pins where you have a head on one end it goes through and then this other end is mushroomed you're gonna take that mushroom out with a with a punch punch it through get it out of the way and then you're gonna slide your shift fork out of the way a little bit do the same thing to the other shift fork then on the front this is the front of the transmission here you're going to have two plugs these are your shift rail plugs the back is open for the shift rails to you know go back and forth and push any kind of dirt and you know grease or whatever out and then the plugs are sealed so anyway you're going to drive them from the back to push and it's going to push the plug out and then in this hole, in this hole, you're going to have your detent ball and also the detent spring, which I can't find. Luckily, the kit comes with a new one. There it is. So that's going to, your spring goes in here and your ball. And essentially, that's just hitting you know these detents here and that holds the shift rail and uh, shift fork in place when you turn the when you move the lever so when you get to the very end you're going to want to put a rag or something flat across this hole because once you drive that pin through surprisingly this spring has a lot of tension behind it and it'll shoot it'll shoot that ball and spring right out catch an eye go halfway across the building whatever so that's basically what I did. 
hopefully, you know, that makes sense. Um, we'll just inspect the shift rails a little, uh, real quick. So we got our second and third gear shift rail. Notice how it's smaller. And then our first and reverse. So the surfaces look good. I'll clean them up and inspect them for cracks, everything like that. Our shift cane surface looks good. And yeah, everything looks good with them. So the next pain in the ass part is getting the retaining spring out for your shift cane. So it's it basically coils down with a lot of tension and grooves inside the casting of the shift tower here. And you gotta fish it out. And then when we go to put it in, we're gonna have to fish it back in. It's it's probably the most pain pain in the butt thing on this transmission. So that being said, the last part to remove is the shift cane. It's gonna come out from the bottom. Now we got a fully disassembled T90A1. And we'll just inspect our shift cane surface. That looks good. No reason not to reuse it. Normally, you know, if you got one with a lot of wear, this will be almost gone. You'll have a lot of slop in your shifts and everything. So it's good.